I'm going to quickly go through the vulnerability assessment for the county as a bridge between Patrick's work and um, Crawford's work. Um, so I just want to say, you know, first, thank you to USGS. I mean, we couldn't have done a vulnerability assessment without the detailed data that we have from them and the data that's more accurate than looking at the bathtub model. Um, so just to remind everyone, I think a lot of you in this room were part of the stakeholder engagement and looked at the vulnerability assessment and gave us lots of feedback to make sure that it was accurate and, and scientifically valid. Um, but I know some of you weren't. So just to quickly go through some of that, um, key in point, this, this is a very collaborative study that took place over a few years. It started in 2015, um, kicked off the Sea Change SMC, um, and we looked at three primary scenarios. Um, really the idea was to not only assess vulnerability, but then to start to think about what can we do after we understand the risk. Um, and that's why we're here today. Uh, so, you know, how do we move from the vulnerability assessment of looking at these scenarios that Patrick's been talking about, of storms and rising sea level rise, um, to then move into the more, even more local level, of getting projects on the ground or getting planning and policies updated to address sea level rise. Um, and really key in this, again, is, as we heard from the supervisors in the beginning, is this awareness building piece. So, you know, throughout the process, um, since 2015, we've engaged about 6,000 people through engagement activities um, and through the YES program that um, Sydney was part of, thankfully, uh, we engaged 1,000 students and we're continuing to do that um, throughout our efforts. So thanks for participating and I think the idea is that groups like this will build capacity to then go out and talk to your communities about sea level rise. Um, so going back to Patrick's point, this is this is one of the maps that we use in the vulnerability assessment. We use three scenarios. We use the baseline flooding scenario, which is existing flooding conditions. So if you look at a FEMA map, map the 1% storm. Then we overlaid that with 3.3 feet, um, which if you go back to Patrick's point about the state projections that's around, we, we, we didn't put numbers on this. We didn't look at the years that these would happen because as we know, the science gets updated over time and over time you then have changes in those projections. But if you look at the current state guidance, that's around 2070 is when you would expect 3 feet. Um, we also looked at 6.6 6 .6 feet of sea level rise, which again, going back to Patrick's point, is around the 2100 period. So we're trying to look at different stages of, of impact. Um, and as you'll see from here, you know, going back to what we talked about before, you have these larger areas of where sea level rise could potentially impact the county, and that's where wetlands traditionally were. So these are lower lying areas, and they also provide this great opportunity to think about these nature-based solutions to sea level rise. Um, on the coast, because we have a lot of steep, steeper um, cliffs, you have more erosion issues, and you can see that the erosion is the, is the orange areas along the coast, and different strategies might be used along the coast versus along the bay side. I think one of the most innovative pieces that, that we took when we looked at the vulnerability assessment was we looked at 30 assets across the county, so infrastructure, so we looked at you know transportation infrastructure, energy infrastructure, and water and flood, um, we looked at natural assets like parks and wetlands, not just for the risk, but also, you know, these are areas that could provide um, adaptation strategies in the future to protect um, inland areas from flooding. We also looked at community resources and organizations that serve the community, uh, making sure that, you know, how, how are fire stations and healthcare centers going to be affected. Um, and we didn't just look at county assets, we, looked, we reached out to stakeholders, we looked at you know, we reached out to cities, we reached out to um, other private entities and said, what are the assets that you most care about and you find valuable to you? And then we worked with those asset managers to say, what's the risk, what's the exposure, and what is the capacity of that facility to deal with sea level rise? Um, and I think those models are definitely the way of moving forward in terms of adaptation strategy development. So now I'm getting to where we are today. So you'll hear more about a lot of these today. You've heard about some of them already. We're doing creating an impacts viewer, um, online viewer that looks at the sea level rise impacts, but also we'll start to look at these other climate impacts like heat, precipitation, and wildfire. Um, if you want the vulnerability assessment data, we already have that online. Um, we're looking at adaptation strategies. Uh, San Francisco Estuary Institute will be starting to talk about 
what they've done around adaptation planning. Um, so Katie will talk about that. Uh, Jim Porter will talk about our Flood and Sea Level Rise Resiliency District, which um, is a collaborative effort with cities and counties in um, the county to look at vulnerability and take it to the project level. And then through our adaptation exchange, you'll hear about the adaptation projects. Many of the projects are taking the vulnerability assessment and taking it to the next step. Um, five of the projects that the county has funded are doing that through our climate resilience grants. Um, I don't expect you to read all of this. This is just where we're continually seeing more and more projects come online around planning and, and implementation. These are some examples of planning, looking at how we're taking this and putting it into policies when the cities and the county are doing that and also how we're putting them into additional planning documents. And then what are people doing around project implementation, um, thinking about you know, what can we do that are best practices and models for the county. And then lastly, I think the idea is that today and in the future, we're trying to look at ways to close these gaps. So until you know, recently, we didn't have data for the South Coast. So now we have South Coast data. We're moving into the vulnerability assessment um, we're expecting to start having community engagements happen in the late summer, early fall, and then move into the adaptation strategies throughout the rest of the year. Um, we'll talk about the impacted, uh, the changes from precipitation and how those impact the flooding we expect on the coast. We're really happy to see this groundwater data that Patrick's talking about and start to incorporate into our assessments. And then as things get wetter along the hills, we might expect differences in debris flow and landslides. So we're looking at how to model that and to improve that data. Um, thanks so much, and I want to move on to, to Claude to talk about precipitation. But if you have questions, feel free to reach out by email, come see me at a break, um, or go to our Sea Change SMC website. We keep that up to date with all of our information. Thanks. <laughs>